Poor communities across the globe tend to use conventional wisdom to tackle natural catastrophes. Disasters can come in various forms, earthquakes, cyclones, hurricanes, fires, etc. And yes, the poor are the most affected ones, as we have recently seen in the Philippines. 6,000 people died in the typhoon uh, Aeon uh, in November 2013 and thousands are still struggling to get back on their feet. The livelihood of most low-income people, especially those living in rural areas uh, in developing countries, highly depends on the vagaries of nature. Drought, for example, can cause havoc in uh, rain-fed areas. Winter and frost are also severe risks for agriculture and livestock. And further than the loss of income associated with a natural catastrophe, um, poor assets are also um, very likely to be depleted. In recent years, um, with the rapid climate change and the detrimental effects of natural hazards, uh, covering disaster risks have become more important than ever. The Climate and Development Knowledge Network, called the CDKN, is a UK-based think tank which provides technical assistance, advocacy and research in the areas of climate and environment. CDKN commissioned a study to assess the role of weather index-based insurance on managing disasters. Microsafe was chosen to uh, conduct this study on, in five countries of South and Southeast Asia, being India, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, the Philippines, and Pakistan. Sunil Bhatt from the Microinsurance Practice Group of Microsafe is here today to describe the project. So, hi, Sunil. Hello. Um, first, can you maybe explain the benefit of index based insurance and how is it different from traditional agriculture insurance? Sure. Traditional insurance offers coverage against perils such as. Uh, excess rainfall, drought, cyclones, typhoons, etc. And the insurance company has to conduct crop cutting experiments to assess the yield loss. Contrary to this, index insurance does not measure yield. It measures a proxy to the yield which can be a close proxy such as a temperature, rainfall, humidity, sunshine, etc. If you look at a typical payout structure of index insurance, you can see uh, a, a strike and an exit point. Strike point is the point where the farmer starts getting a payout. It continues till the exit. The maximum payout the farmer gets is at the exit point and the minimum payout is at the strike point. There are some more differences between index insurance and traditional insurance. The first one being assessment time. Uh, for traditional insurance it varies from say 9 to 12 months whereas for index insurance it is faster 30 to 45 days. The second uh, one is sustainability. Uh, traditionally, it has been seen that uh, traditional insurance uh, is not sustainable compared to uh, uh, an index insurance program. Uh, the other one is vintage. If you look at the traditional insurance, uh, it has been continuing from last 30 to 40 years in, in most of the countries compared to index insurance which is only a decade, uh, decade old. And uh, if you look at the cost, cost wise, traditional insurance are, products are cheaper compared to that of uh, index insurance products which are like in the range of two to three times um, more expensive. Thank you Sunil for explaining both concepts. Can you also describe how it works concretely in the five countries of the study? If you look at the Indian scenario, it started off as an effort from the private sector and then the government later took on uh, with its product. That, uh, as of now, the weather based crop, crop insurance scheme, the WBCIS is the largest weather index insurance scheme in India as well as in the world. It has benefited 37 million farmers uh, till date. Uh, when we go to Pakistan, uh, the efforts are again on the, on the private side with index insurance being supported by uh, a Pakistan Poverty Elevation Fund and the IFAD. If you look at the Sri Lankan scenario, uh, the index insurance effort started in 2008 with a project from ILO and DID. And there is one more project uh, which is uh, supported by GIIF of uh, IFC uh, which is for the uh, tea farmers. Uh, uh, coming to the scenario in Philippines, again it is a, uh, the initiative was supported, uh, uh, was supported by the Philippines crop insurance uh, 
corporation uh, and also a private player uh, micro insure is also quite active in the index, index insurance space. However, when you come to the Indonesian scenario, there are no index products as of now, but definitely they have uh, disaster insurance products for uh, say dengue or, or earthquake and also there are efforts by um, companies such as MyPark to introduce index insurance products in collaboration with uh, global players such as Global AgRisk. Index insurance is an effective risk management tool for the poor, but it's not panacea in itself. It also comes with some challenges. Can you describe some of the challenges? Weather infrastructure is one of the major challenges facing index insurance. It results in basis risk, uh, which essentially is that the farmer gets a payout uh, even though his yield has been better or vice versa. Uh, the second one has been reinsurance support. So uh, reinsurers always would like to benefit a program which is larger in size. Uh, whereas index insurance is still smaller, so it is a kind of a catch-22 situation here. The other challenge is distribution. Insurance companies do not have a, an effective outreach in the rural areas uh, where index insurance uh, is to be sold. So they have to take support from uh, agencies uh, uh, such as NGOs. Uh, a similar thing was done uh, in the Pakistan case as well where uh, the insurance company took the support from NRSP and SVDP which were the uh, NGOs, which were the local NGOs. One more challenge is regarding improving the understanding level of farmers. Since index insurance is more complex compared to traditional insurance, farmers have to be educated. And the last but most important challenge is with respect to the sustainability of an index insurance program. As you see, there is a government support. In the case of WBCIS, the farmer pays only one third of the premium uh, and the remaining is shared between the state and the central governments. So, uh, in case the government takes away the support, then the su sustainability of the pro uh, program itself uh, is at stake. So these are some of the challenges which, which we see uh, for index insurance. So we have seen that index based insurance can be very different from one country to another. For example, in India it has been a frank success, but in other countries like in Indonesia it is yet to start. So could you maybe mention some uh, enabling factors for the index insurance scale up? Identification of the right index parameter is one of the major challenges for an index insurance program. Many times it happens that uh, the parameter we choose for an index product does not mimic the yield and that is where the index insurance uh, product fails. The second one is the government support. Uh, as, I, uh, as you see, uh, most of the successful index insurance programs have been the one where uh, there has been government support. So tying up government support is very, very essential. The third one is has got to do with reinsurance. Uh, reinsurance uh, supports an index insurance program in case of uh, catastrophes. Uh, the fourth one is effort on distribution of the index insurance product as well as the marketing effort uh, which goes into selling a product. The fifth one is uh, regarding the client education. The client has to be educated so that he understands the benefit of an index insurance product vis-a-vis -vis a traditional insurance product. Creating research and development capacities for an insurance company is very essential because currently many of the index insurance products are supported by international agencies such as the World Bank uh, and uh, GIZ. And uh, finally, improvement in weather infrastructure is a must to fight things such as basis risk. Even though uh, index-based insurance is not the only disaster management tool for the poor, it is one of the most effective ones. So Microsave will release the report of this study. Please watch our website.